Kush. Welcome back to Calypso's Cove, where the magic is our message. It is your mistress of magic, Black Aphrodite, here again with another pick a card. I miss you guys. It's been a long time, I know. I told you guys in the channel update yesterday that I would be coming to you with a reading this Monday because I know I've been gone too long. I was not feeling well. I just wanna say thank you for all of your support, your comments, your words of encouragement, letting me know what's going on. I love you guys so much. I am taken back by how beautiful and how wonderful this channel is. And I am so appreciative of every single person who resonates with my videos. You guys are part of my soul tribe. Calypso's is our temple. I love the way we raise the divine feminine frequency together. So please, um, if you're new, hit that subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. We have a beautiful family here beautiful school of fish um check out our etsy shop calypsos by aphrodite follow me on my personal account it's black aphrodite spelled the exact same way i spell it in the description box below and check out calypsos cove 7 on instagram that's where i showcase um the beautiful products that we have so beautiful so amazing with the intention of mama ocean and a bit of her magic in every single item so without further ado let's get into today's topic today's topic is a fun one how are you going to be stepping on next how are you going to be bossing up during your glow up you're going to be stepping on people's necks out here and we want to see what you're about to get into so without further ado let's pick our piles see you there hey guys okay my beautiful loves so today i decided to do something a little different for our pile selection we're gonna have maiden mother crone energy so pile number one will be the beautiful goddess aphrodite you know how much we love Aphrodite in this temple. She is one of our matrons and she will be heading pile number one with maiden energy, Aphrodite. Okay. Pile number two, of course, we have the illustrious, beautiful, powerful mistress of magic herself, goddess Isis, goddess of 10,000 names, and she will be crowning Mother Energy. All right. And that's pile number two. And then pile number three, this is a goddess I work with privately, but I have the most respect for her, have had altars for her in the past. She has helped me numerous ways, one of the most powerful goddesses you can ever work with goddess hecate look at this card can you really see this card is electric first of all it is such a beautiful powerful card and she will be crowning pile number three with the energy of the crone okay so take a minute let's get a little smudge going for you for me, so I give you the best reading possible. Smudge my hands. Smudge these cards. Meditate over how are you going to be embodying this next step, this stepping on people's necks, not giving people a break, not letting people let up. Okay? Are you going to be maiden, mother, or crone? I'll see you at your pile. Bye. Hello, pile number one. This is for those of you who were drawn to the beautiful maiden energy of goddess Aphrodite. Let's take a second to get into this card. <sighs> Gorgeous. So we will set you here, my loves. You are now mounted on the altar. Excuse the shaking. I shook the table. <laughs> okay, so 
How are you going to be bossing up? How are you gonna be stepping on people's necks? Firstly, you're gonna be having way more fun. You're gonna be going out more. Oh my God, I keep shaking the table. I'm so sorry. You're gonna be going out more. You're gonna be talking to different people. You're gonna be laughing more. You're just gonna be very exuberant, very beautiful, very ethereal. Mm. I don't know why I got quiet like that, I'm sorry. A message came up for you guys that I'm just like, ooh. Ignore the scar right here, kinda got into a little accident over the weekend, but everything is fine. Interesting energy for you guys, for sure. Catching me off guard. Okay. Then I'm gonna pull some messages from the Mermaid Oracle deck because I feel that for you guys. to go with the flow of this reading if it seems a little off i'm sorry i'm still getting my mojo back and i'm gonna pull one more card for you guys from the chakra mudra deck let's see guys that you guys are going to be having a lot of fun and I had to stop myself um, mid-sentence because something completely different came up for you guys I still feel like you guys are going to be having fun doing what you want to do enjoying your life but there seems to be something that's coming up in the mix for you bossing up okay you potentially have a new love interest, pile number one. Now this is maiden energy, you chose Aphrodite. We know the lore and the mythos surrounding Aphrodite, how she is a powerful seductress. She is in love with herself, therefore everything is in love with her. She is eternally blooming. She's beautiful. She's evanescent or evanescent. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that word properly. But there's something about Aphrodite that is absolutely alluring to all people around her. It invokes so many different emotions, whether that's anger, jealousy, um, inspiration, lust, love, um, chaos even sometimes when it comes to Aphrodite. And I am feeling a little bit of chaos coming up for you guys on how you're going to be bossing up. So firstly, we have the Knight of Swords in reverse. Mostly we think about somebody coming in with news, um, maybe even potentially arguments or something that might be combative. But with it being in reverse and you guys picking Aphrodite, I feel that these are suitors coming for you that have not said anything. These are people that want to date you. Now that you have bossed up pile number one, it seems like love is making its way to you. You have worked deeply on the principle of self-love, self-respect, self-validation, and self-affirmation right? A lot of inward focus I really, really feel for you guys. It feels like you were on a little bit of a hermit mode or just kind of like you've gone underground and it's literally like the energy of what we're experiencing right now with spring. You are now coming up. You are blooming. You are showing the highest, most beautiful, most vibrant portion of yourself. Your petal open. You are ready to experience 
love, right? Just any type of love, whether it's platonic love, familial love, and now romantic love. It is a lot of people coming your way. I'm really drawn to the plural in swords because it's not just one night. These are a lot of eligible bachelor, bachelorettes coming to you right now. Now, I really do feel like this is more of a masculine vibe because we are a divine feminine channel. And I don't say this to offend anybody, but if you're here, you're more than likely a divine feminine who's going to detract, excuse me, going to attract a divine masculine. So we have suitors coming in from all directions, north, south, east, and west. And somebody is going to make a serious commitment to you because we have the Hierophant. When we think of the Hierophant, we think about institutions, social dynamics, um, dogma, how we relate in society underneath the guise of social constructs and social restrictions, morals, the things that we've created with each other within society to establish boundaries and order. And the Hierophant also represents the institution of marriage. So seeing the Knight of Swords, the Hierophant, and then next we have the Ace of Cups, which can represent new love, wish fulfillment, romance, creativity, um, a bubbling, bright sacral chakra, um, good news when it comes to love and luck, right? Because we have all the water blessing you, a new opportunity in terms of water energy, water representing our eternal source, pregnancy, love, you know, the list goes on. You guys definitely have stepped up so much that now people want to step to you. So how you are bossing up, pile number one, is potentially getting married. There is somebody coming in who is very nervous, pile number one. They're very nervous to show you how much they care about you. They're nervous to tell you how they really feel because what they feel is very intense for them. It's very serious. They want to take the relationship to the next level. And that's that ace. Now, this could potentially be somebody you don't know. Or this could potentially be somebody that you do know, that the relationship has been rocky. So if you have um, looked at my pick a card for your aura, what is your aura? You could have potentially been pile number two with that aura where people feel like they fall in love with you very, very quickly, especially with Aphrodite, your maiden energy. You're very much so in your sensual power right now power number one that's another way that you're bossing up and i didn't mean for this to be a love reading but you did pick the goddess of love so i'm actually not surprised that a love message has popped up for you because a lot of the time in society we use marriage to you know level up we use marriage to define ourselves sometimes we come together with our assets in marriage and it makes a very powerful dynamic like let's take jay-z and beyonce for example they're a powerhouse alone but they are a huge force together united in marriage and i do feel like that is a way according to Aphrodite, that you are going to be bossing up. I kind of want to jump to the Mermaid Oracle card because here you have the Song of the Siren and this is a summoning card. It says the call summoning voice to acknowledge. So there's somebody in your life who has something to say to you and they also feel very drawn to you as well. Pile number one. Is something about you right now, especially with this Aphrodite, that's very alluring, very pulling, very tantalizing. And this person or persons, because I feel like there's multiple people who want to be with you at this time, but there's one particular person who really wants to settle in. And now I'm drawn to the keys at the bottom and between the two men that's sitting down in front of the Pope or the priest, the Hierophant. 
there's keys right there. You see them? Let me make sure you can. It's like they want to be the key to your happiness. They want to be the key to your dreams, to your experiences, to your goals. Um, another thing with the maiden energy, when we think about the maiden energy, sometimes we can think about the archetype of the princess or the damsel in distress and how there's always this knight in shining armor, right? Oh my God, yeah, knight of swords. There's always this knight that wants to come through and protect the princess. He wants to provide the princess a castle, a safe space where she can be her beautiful, alluring, innocent self. And I really feel that for you, pile number one. This person wants to provide three of pentacles, the source um, of your explorations and your career, you being able to be creative because with this ace of cups, I'm really feeling like you're a very creative person. Um, you might have a business like a Etsy shop, for example, candle business, um, knitting, crochet. I always pick that up. Just something that you enjoy doing. And this person wants to provide the resources for you to do the things that you enjoy. So that is potentially another way for you to boss up because like again marriage if you marry somebody that has a lot of assets that has a very large bank account and i'm really feeling that for you power number one this person that wants to be with you is no slouch okay they they have a lot to offer they want to give you everything and they enjoy you exactly the way that you are this is a more traditional version of bossing up because now in society, when we think about bossing up, we think about what we are doing for ourselves, right? How we are like getting in control of our lives, being independent, doing what we need to do. But this right here is very old school, especially again, I'm just so drawn to this hair font. This person that loves you is very traditional very traditional they want to be that traditional masculine role and i'm not really feeling like this is like a traditional cisgender person i'm just feeling like hey they just have traditional ideas when it comes to loving you because i'm definitely getting like a capricorn um taurus Scorpio kind of vibe here. Even though Capricorn is not a fixed sign, I'm really getting kind of like a fixed energy when it comes to their Venus. So they could very much so have like a Scorpio Venus or um, kind of like a Taurus Venus, something that makes them just want to stick to you like glue. They don't want anybody else and they really want to share their assets with you. This person could also have very strong second house placements. Their second house could also be in Taurus or in Scorpio, in Leo, in Capricorn. So the list goes on for how it can manifest. But if you know the person I'm talking about, maybe you could look at their chart and decipher for yourself or just kind of feel the vibe. This person might be a sun sign, Taurus, Capricorn. Um, I'm also picking up Leo, Aquarius, maybe even potentially a Sagittarius because this person is very direct and clear on what they want to experience with you. And again, they don't care about sharing with you. Four of Pentacles in reverse. They don't care about sharing their assets with you at all. What they deeply care about is being able to have you. That Four of Pentacles to me, that lets me know that they are very, very fixed on you, a little stingy. They do not like to share. They don't want anybody to experience what they experience with you, pile number one. It's very beautiful. Um, I'm going to jump to the next mermaid card right quick too because I know it's like, well, which cards are you doing? I told you. If I'm all over the place today, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get my little mojo back. 
Then next we have the Magic of the Kalianth Sheath or the Kalianth Druid, excuse me. This card is all about the idea of mermaids coming on land and kind of having to protect themselves and keep their truth a secret. So the way that you genuinely are, um, so let's say you're a very um, physical, sensual person and you enjoy physical pleasures or you just have like this hidden energy about you, this hidden magic, this hidden je ne sais quoi. This person, right, they love the je ne sais quoi. They love the magic. They love the energy that you provide. They want to be around it. And, you know, they honestly want you to keep it hidden from other people. Okay, now that could be something that you guys need to work on and need to talk about because they have no problem with you doing your business and fulfilling your dreams. They want to help you. They want to provide for you. They're, they're very allured by you. But there's something here that feels a little karmic. And I want to put this out here because we have the card release, the Kali Mudra. And this um assist, excuse me, in expansiveness, release, and spiritual purification. This is the throat chakra, so speaking your truth. And this says, I release all obstacles and align to my true nature. So we have the magic of the Kalian Druids, which is all about aligning to your true nature, being your true self, not having to hide. And then we have release. So this person even though they love you, a part of you bossing up is being like, hey, you can love me as long as you want, as hard as you want. But at the end of the day, eight of swords upright, I will not be trapped. And that's right underneath the Hierophant card. I will not be trapped just because you want to marry me. This is a part of you bossing up. You know, there are many people who love me. Because we have the Four of Pentacles underneath that Knight of Swords. There are many people who want to get with me. If you want to get with me, you are not going to trap me, right? You are not going to be able to come in with this cup, with this Ace of Cups, with the money, with the coins, coming through with everything that you claim that you can provide for me. And when I don't do what you want, it turns into an ace, excuse me, it turns into a five of pentacles situation where I'm begging you for attention, I'm begging you for time, and you're kind of forcing me to have to be dependent on you. That's another way that you're bossing up. You refuse to fully be dependent on somebody. And I don't blame you, don't be trapped in this situation. Really think hard about this dynamic that you have with this person. Because underneath the Three of Pentacles, we have the Page of Swords in reverse. So this person is very, very good with words, but they can't sweet talk you, okay? This person is very dynamic and very charismatic, but they're not going to get over on you, pattern number one. And that's a huge way that you're bossing up. You have options in love, and that's really fantastic. But don't forget, you're still in the portion of releasing. So you're releasing things that don't serve you. You're releasing relationship dynamics with men, with masculines, excuse me, that really don't fit the bill. You have this summoning call with the voice of the siren right now where you can pull in the love that you seek. Love without compromise. That's really another way that you're bossing up pile number one. So... This is very, very important for you. I feel like it was a deep message. Don't get caught up, you know. Don't get caught up in feeling like you need to be with a specific person just because. You have options. You have control. You have the power now, okay, especially when it comes to your romantic relationships. So that is a huge way that you're going to be stepping on these people's necks, honey, because they're not going to know what to do. They're, they're going to be so taken back by you being in control in this way and I think that's really awesome for you I can feel like this is a long time coming for you pile number one so this is going to conclude your reading my maiden pile I deeply hope that this resonated with you let me know in the comment section below what you think and let's close out with coming forth putting our hands together
Namaste, beloveds. Until next time, bye-bye. Hello, pile number two. This is for those of you who were drawn to Goddess Isis, our mother energy, mother archetype. Yes. Firstly, I want to say, <laughs> I am still recovering. I know, um, just warning, word to the wise, if I seem a little off, I might be. I want to give you guys the best reading possible, but forgive me if I just seem a little off kilter. I'm going to smudge myself again just to make sure I can give you the best reading. Let me get my third eye. Whew. Let me do my hands. And let's see how you are bossing up. Now, her card says sacred contracts. I was channeling from you guys business, big business moves, okay? Something coming up where you are going to be in a strong position of power. Now, let's see what comes up further with the cards. Got lots of swords so far. Now, guys, <laughs> there has been a lot of love messages in these readings, and this is not on purpose. Let's see. All right, we're going to pull some cards from the Mermaid Oracle deck. My goodness, there's a lot of love messages. You guys might have also been drawn to um, pile number one. So it seems like there's like a little bit of continuation here. Let me just get all the tea right quick, everybody. One second, please. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna pull out this Mermaid Oracle deck real quick. So you have beauty for the first card. It just popped out. Okay, let's see what we have for our second card. Farewell to the moon. I'm gonna wait and just, you know, get everything out so we can get a clear reading, okay? And then we have the sacral chakra for our mudra card. Let me set this here. Okay. All right, so there's um, a couple of ways we can interpret this. So let's get into how you're gonna be bossing up and stepping up pile number two. Firstly, there has been somebody who has been playing with you, okay? They're playing with your money. Excuse me, I'm so sorry if you heard that. Anyway, they're playing with your money. They're playing with your assets. Somebody was trying to get away with something. I actually feel like because it's a sword, we have the seven of swords in reverse. They were trying to tarnish your reputation. Somebody was trying to get away with your good name. Pile number two. You have something going on in your work life where you are very, very, very powerful boss in whatever field you are in. People know of you, 
okay? So this could be anything. You could be a pharmacist. You could be um, a loctician, doing people's hair, a beautician. You could be anything, a teacher, a lawyer, whatever your profession is. Something that does involve talking to people though. Something that involves communication, um, knowledge, for example. Somebody has been playing with your good name. A way that you're gonna be bossing up is by completely ignoring whatever this person has going on. The haters, the naysayers, the people who are just always very catty, very chatty. I'm feeling like because this is seven, it's more than one person. And this is some wisdom with that seven that you have garnered. You know who to trust and who not to trust. Now, it's feeling like this is something between you and a woman. So, this is the relationship message coming through. There could potentially be a situation. Now, this is like very extreme, but I'm just going to read the cards as they come. This could be a situation where two queens are involved. You are a queen and the other person is a queen. This could be in the workplace or this could be romantically. So you could be involved in a situation where a man already had a previous serious situation going on with another woman. Okay, so they could have a child together. Just putting that out there. We have the Queen of Swords in reverse. And I'm feeling like this person is the culprit for who is trying to tarnish your good name. Because you are very well known. We have the World card upright underneath that Seven of Swords, right? So you have the world at your disposal pile number two there's something about you like i said when it comes down to you interacting with people when it comes down to your business whatever it is that you do for work you don't play you are very much so a boss in your field so this person could be potentially a baby mama that sounds like a lot we never really get this type of energy in this channel but this could be a potential or an ex-wife, an ex-girlfriend, a serious long-term girlfriend. It could be your ex-girlfriend. You know, somebody is very angry with you, okay? How you're gonna be bossing up is you're not gonna care. <laughs> Let me just put that out there. There's some type of sacred contract that you have, right? But you chose the mother energy. So that means you're more evolved, pile number two. You're above and kind of beyond whatever it is that this person is trying to get off. So it's like if they're trying to talk shit, and I'm sorry to say it like that, it came out so fast. But if they are talking a lot and doing a lot of, you know, being chatty, being catty, you do not care. <laughs> let me just put that out there there's so much of you that's just like I'm over it I am really trying to build my perfect life my perfect reality I don't have time to be in some type of drama and some boundaries with um, boundaries being crossed by you I don't think so with this queen being in reverse, it's seeming like a very desperate energy, especially beside this seven of swords. So this person is highly desperate, highly jealous, um, just really, really irritating. It, it feels I'm irritated basically from dealing with the energy even in the reading because it's almost like this person is like a pest and this is a huge um karmic cycle that's coming to a close for you again this seven lets me know that there's wisdom there's opportunity for growth inside of this situation especially with it being in reverse so let's start with the situation if this is your current significant other's ex if your current significant other has a child with this person, sacred contract, a child is a sacred contract. They would be attached to this person 
forever because they are connected through blood. And that's why you really have to be careful who you choose to be in a relationship with and also who you choose to have children with. Because once you connect with blood, that's the most tangible soul contract you can ever make with somebody. At this point, you are bossing up by being more in control of your home, pile number two. We have the 10 of cups here, but it's in reverse. So this lets me know that the potential for happiness is completely there. But there's some mess that's going on from this other person. Now, you have the ability to ignore them. You have the ability to cool all situations and just make sure that, hey, because here we see two children and we see a couple. So this kind of confirms to me that there's potentially children involved. You know in your heart another way that you're bossing up is, hey, the children are still a part of my life. They are something that I want, um, something that I deeply care about, but it's not going to control me, right? You're not going to sit here and be crying and be woe is me over anything that's going on in this situation. You've really bossed up with emotional maturity. I feel like there was one point in time in your life where the idea of being married, the idea of being a mother was so important to you. Now, what's more important is your own emotions, your own well-being, your own emotional safety. Jumping to the Mermaid Oracle, we have beauty here. This says grace, loveliness, integrity, a form and spirit. And I really feel like for you, pile number two, this is where you're at. There is a lot of grace behind you at this point. Because beside that Ten of Cups, we have the Queen of Cups upright. This is you in this situation. The Queen of Cups has a tight lid over her emotions, she's not gonna be stressed out. Nobody's going to make her come off her throne. Nobody is going to make her emotionally lash out. She is going to be an integrity of form and spirit. She is gonna be showing grace and loveliness and beauty. That's you. You are going to keep this happy home. There might be somebody in the mix trying to make the situation rocky, trying to get you off kilter. You're not falling for it anymore. You're in your mother energy. That means creatrix. What does a mother do? She creates life, AKA her reality. She is the soul force behind creating her reality. At this point in time, you're creating your reality through your emotions. Now, let's take it back. If this is a coworker who's messing up, who's kind of like bringing this energy into your house and your household has been a little messy, remember, this person can only go as far as you allow them to go, pile number two. So they're in reverse right now. This queen of swords is not in their integrity. They are showing probably um, a toxic cycle that they are working through right now by being so obsessed <laughs> mentally with you, okay? If this is a coworker. So they're not showing the best side of themselves, even though they are a queen, even though they have the ability to kind of ch ch shut up, throw the key away, and turn that reversal into upright and just being more so having tact, basically having more tact, being able to be more in control of their life. And they're not doing that because they're obsessed with you. Because right now, you are the idea of what they could imagine as being a happy life. Um, it seems like if this is a coworker or a friend, they're very jealous of your personal life. They're jealous of this family, this 10 of cups, dynamic that you have here they want what you have very deeply they want to be you they want this loveliness 
And at the end of the day, you can only choose to be around this person if they are at work, if um, you know it's a personal, if it is a friend, you can only choose to be around them if you choose to, right? If it's at work, you don't have to interact with them beyond whatever it is that you have to do at work. You don't have to bring this situation home. You don't have to deal with them if this is a jealous friend. And this is something I feel like you're deeply understanding with this Queen of Cups upright. You don't have to feed any of these emotions. And this really is a cycle. This is a cycle for you. This is a long time coming because this person with this seven, to me, they've been here for a little while, okay? So like I said, if it is a coworker, you might've been at this job for a while, you might have um, been the friends with this person for a while. The cycle for you was about to end just from you shutting down your emotions, big boss energy. You're not feeding them. You're no longer going to feed them. You're only going to feed yourself by being in your integrity. So we have the world card underneath that seven of swords like i said so you have the world at your disposal there's something coming through for you pile number two new opportunities um just a new it could potentially be a new job if you want out of the situation out of the sacred contracts because you are the creatrix of your life you can dip out you don't have to stay pile number two Knight of Swords behind that world card right beside it. So there's um, people coming through quickly. Options coming through quickly. This is new opportunities for work, for a business, for um, connecting. This is verbal contracts. Um, this is new friends. This is just new opportunities. Now, it's in reverse underneath that Queen of Swords. So this is something that I feel like you have been contemplating for a while. Again, you are the creatrix of your reality and you are deeply stepping up to that. So you have the option to move as quickly or as slowly as you want. Don't, but don't be intimidated, excuse me, by change, pile number two. Don't be intimidated by that because change is inevitable. And that's another thing that this queen of swords and all of these swords can represent. When we think about the air element, we think about things that are swift, things that are sharp, things that are clear. So be very clear with how you make your decisions and you don't have to stay stuck in anything. This is something that can happen very, very fast once you make up your mind because you are in your integrity, you know, as the queen of cups. You're emotionally aware of what you want to experience. As embodying goddess Isis, the goddess of 10,000 names, that means you have the ability to do whatever you prefer. Pile number two, big boss energy stepping on next, knowing, hey, you don't have to stay at this job. You don't have to deal with verbal abuse, people taking advantage of you. You don't have to deal with a toxic ex. You don't have to deal with somebody's um, baby mother or the mother of their children. You don't have to deal with that, okay? You have the opportunity for some new people to come into your life who actually are emotionally reciprocative in a way that you want to receive. Not just drama, not just jealousy, not anxiety. Because next we have the Page of Cups. This to me, right underneath that 10 of cups in reverse, is letting you know like, hey, all the options are really in your hands, pile number two. There's something here, new person, new friends, new opportunity for creativity, new opportunity for love. So really be mindful if this family is something that you want. If this friend is something that you want, if this job is something that you want, because at the end of the day, you bossing up means you doing what you want to do, being accountable for your actions on some ISIS ish, you know, being accountable for who you are. And at the same time, letting people kind of fall, the chips fall where they may for other people. You just being in control of your life and doing what you feel is right for you. So if you need to be in a different dynamic, 
If you want a new person, then that is on you. There's also potential for the person that you are currently in a relationship with in any form to also develop emotionally. There's a potential with you um, really being in that Queen of Cups energy, really being in that Isis mother mode. The mother sets up the whole energy for the entire house, right? That's why we actually love mother energy in the society. She has the kids under control. She has um, her significant other under control in a healthy, positive way because she is the matriarch. Everything in the domestic sphere, everything emotionally is the embodiment of what she creates. So remember that. So you have the opportunity to turn things around with your significant other as well. And they can meet you where you are. They might be a page, but they can get to a king. Okay, at least they are starting as a page, right? So underneath that Queen of Cups, we have the Ace, excuse me, I keep saying Ace. We have the Eight of Wands in reverse. So there's real fast movement here. There's passion. There's a lot of energy, but it's in reverse because you are the Queen of Cups. You don't do anything halfway. You really think things through integrity of form and spirit. So there are fast changes coming for you. If you want them, whatever you want, whatever you desire, big boss energy, it can be yours. Pile number two, you just have to be in that integrity, really step up, step in to your mother energy, into your creative mode, create your reality. If you want your partner to be a certain way, think it, feel it, embody it, treat your partner the way you want them to treat you. If you want to leave that relationship, start planning the tangible steps in order to leave it. Start manifesting that person if you want to experience something new. Start dealing with the energy with this other person, this jealous queen of swords, this person who's trying to tarnish your good name. How you want to handle that is all on you. Because we have next, farewell to the moon. Appreciate and enjoy the lunar light and cycles. So yeah, you're strongly in your divine feminine energy. We have a full moon here. We have cycles. So this is you going through the cycles on your own choosing, appreciating and enjoying the cycles as they come, but also being aware that, hey, the moon also controls the tides, right? The moon controls what we think, what we feel in reality. It's our subconscious. So really getting in touch with that and really being that undercurrent in your own life, pile number two. Bossy. That's another way. These are different ways to be a boss. And I really love how this energy is like showing itself in these readings. So the last card we have, the second to last card we have is the four of wands so this lets me know that no matter what you choose to do you will be happy pile number two and that's what i'm telling you you have the option now with your boss energy to change any situation into something that works for you not against you and then we have the sacral chakra which again is that deep feminine energy we see isis with her blue of the sacral excuse me of the third eye and then the orange of the sacral the gold on the inside for divine feminine alchemy so that's where you're at at this time with the sacral card reassurance so you reassure yourself inner well-being inner nourishment safety relieving tension enhancing circulation and the focus is self-reassurance guides me to perfect well-being. If that's not confirmation, I don't know what it is. Okay, so be reassured within yourself, self-reassurance. And you, my love, will have the most potent, powerful life you can ever have. You are going to have so much beauty, so much happiness. Okay? So this will be concluding your reading on how you are bossing up. I really hope you enjoyed. Again, this is something very different, very, very different, but I love it. Um, I'm sorry if I offended anybody with the baby mama kind of mother of the children thing, but I just wanted to read the cards as the messages were coming up. A lot of different options for different people. So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. I love you so much. Let's get into our reverence mudra. 
hands in front of you. I revere you. I honor you. And with that, we say namaste. Whew. I love you guys. Until we meet again. Bye-bye. Hi, pile number three. This is for those of you who chose the powerful goddess Hecate and in your crone energy for how you're bossing up on people, how you're stepping on people's necks. You are really coming through, okay? With that electric magic. So let's see what you are doing, what you're going to be doing to boss up and step on people's necks. Firstly, let's smudge. Smudge you. Smudge myself. Smudge my hands. Okay, so let's see. I feel a very, very different energy for your pile than um, the energy from pile number one and pile number two. But, you know, I am going to wait for my channeling just to ensure that the messages we receive are extremely accurate. Like I've been telling the other piles, I am still a little off, um, but I'm going to be still giving you good messages for sure. So let's see what's going on because their messages were something I completely did not expect. All right, let's get to shuffling. There's definitely some deep intensity here with your pile. You are not playing with people, pile number three. I love that. Okay. There's a lot of love messages in these readings on accident, even though we're supposed to be knowing how we're bossing up. But sometimes the way that we need to boss up involves love, does it not? Because love is such a huge part of our reality. Wow, you got a lot of fire. And she's holding fire. It's like an electric fire on her fingertips. So yeah, you are literally so um, zesty, so passionate. Pile number three, I really love that. And then of course, there's this wisdom about you guys. If you chose pile number three and if you were drawn to it. So let's see what else we have going on here. Okay. Some reoccurring themes for sure for these piles. I'm actually going to see. I just want to make sure that not we're getting different messages for these piles. You know, I don't want the same messages over and over again. So spirit, please make sure we're getting accurate messages for pile number three. Okay. Definitely some new opportunities coming for you, pile number three. I'm going to use the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle deck for you guys. Let me pull that out. Lastly, we'll pull a mudra card for you guys. Chakra mudra. See what chakras you're working with. See your energy, what you're talking about. Okay. So you guys definitely have a different energy than pile number two 
in pile number one, for sure. Let's start off with the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle deck, and I just saw 444. So that is either um, confirmation or a message from your guardian angels or ancestors. We also have number 22 for this card, Library. Take control of your own narrative. Now, with Hecate here, you have been through a lot. Pile number three. There are so many things that you've been through in so many ways that you've experienced um, different situations in the past and maybe some in the present. You are very wise, right? You've been through a lot, you've learned, you've grown, and you've expanded. Now the way that you're going to be bossing up is taking control of your own narrative. That is a theme um, from pile number two as well. So maybe you might resonate with pile number two. Really taking control of your own life and doing exactly what it is that you know. Living in your own truth is a way that you're going to be bossing up. Next card we have is the Knight of Wands. Now, in other piles, I've been interpreting knights as people coming to you. But for your pile, I feel like this is what you are embodying. There is a bossy energy about you right now. Very passionate, very fiery. Like I said, Hecate is holding the fire within her hands. She is her own source and she is her own light. And I really feel that way for you, pile number three. There's something that you're doing that's showing you are in your own integrity. You are becoming more of a source of your own passion. You are holding your own zest, your own spunk. And there's something very like riled up about it. Just like, yeah, like I am who I am. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to say what I want to say because I've been through it. I know who I am, Goddess Hecate. I am powerful. I am wise. I don't need anybody doing anything for me that I can't do for myself. Okay? So there's something about this Knight of Wands also with your creativity. Your creativity is about to be through the roof, pile number three. I'm really feeling like whatever you're about to do creatively is really about to take off. Really, truly. That's another way that you're going to be bossing up. Now, next card we have is the Eight of Wands in reverse. You are done fighting with people, okay? You come from a background where you've always had to stand up for yourself. You've always had to fight for yourself. You've also fought for the underdogs around you as well. I really feel that way. You have learned so, so much from this fight, pile number three. Um, and then on top of that, you've had some pretty rough situations when it comes to love. You're done with that. If it's a situation where you have to be fighting, where you have to be drained, where you have to get out of your element, you are no longer going to participate in it. Now, mind you, you are a very fiery, very passionate person. Maybe not always. Maybe this is something I feel like you've had to grow into and accept about yourself or this is like a phase that you're in currently because this fight that you have right now is very important for you to just channel into that creative passion because you were done eight you know this is the infinity this is the loop the cycle that we've been going under so this is something that's probably been happening for you for multiple lives past life energy coming up to me um, with just you always having to defend yourself, with always having to fight for yourself, fight for your right to be you, and you are done with that. Now you're going to be around people who genuinely celebrate you, who genuinely love you. You're rewriting that narrative, right? Um, you're not concerned with the past anymore, or at least this is how it's about to be. You are about to move away from concerns of drama and concerns of anxiety and really coming into mental clarity. You know, really coming into, hey, happiness and who serves you um, in the most healthy, most productive, most loving way. Now, 
we have the Three of Swords upright, and we have been receiving quite a bit of love messages in this. And as Divine Feminines, we are always moving from our heart, right? We're always loving people. There will always be love involved. But now for you, you're experiencing a deep awakening pile number three to let you know that because we have two threes here and we're going to get into it but we have the three of swords and then we have the three of cups if it doesn't emotionally fulfill you you're out of here there's also a deep awakening happening with you through this fighting through this you know this going back and forth that you used to go through and now that's in your past in this three of swords i feel like it's upright because it kind of created for you that hecate like wisdom it created for you the passion and the drive to move forward for yourself versus moving forward for somebody else big energy big boss vibes we have the ace of wands here Okay, so this is really, truly you stepping into a new version of yourself, a new form of creativity, a new form of expression that I feel like a lot of people are not going to be expecting from you. And it's coming through in such a wise, powerful way, um, in a way that actually represents um, so much more um, awareness for you. So much, um, and I just saw 1111 11 on the clock as well, um, on our timer. So if you go to look up 444, also look up 1111. 11. These are some messages from you, from your spirit guides, ancestors, guardian angels. Um, with this 1111, 11, that definitely lets me know that you are inside of an activation since we are talking about the Ace of Wands. You are activating this part of yourself right now through that heartbreak, that heartbreak Whatever this three of swords represents for you really ignited so much wisdom within you that now this ace of wands is coming through as your karma, is coming through as how you are bossing up this new level of creativity, how you choose to redirect your life, how you choose to direct the narrative. We have our next um, Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle card with Phoenix literally rising from the ashes. So the, ele the element of fire is very, very important for you right now. Pile number three. Gorgeous card, really fits the Hecate vibe. And this is um, Phoenix, how's that for a happily ever after? And it looks like this card almost looks the exact same, like they're the same girls are on the card. You know, they both have crowns. They're kind of wearing the same outfits, same hair color. So yeah, this is definitely you changing things up. You're not worried about somebody else's version of a happily ever after. So if you um, ended a few relationships, um, romantic relationships and friendships, you're no longer worried about their idea of what would make you happy. That's a way that you're bossing up. Now you're only concerned with what makes you happy what makes you feel good what makes you feel powerful so we have the queen of swords in reverse and i feel like this represents you at this point in time as well coming through with the idea of hey you have been afraid this is why i feel like it's in reverse because you've been afraid to step into that queen of swords energy excuse my camera shaking you've been afraid to kind of speak your truth to be more upfront with what it is that what you want to say and how you feel but now that you're controlling the narrative now that you're no longer afraid to speak your truth and to say what you want, there's going to be passion with it being underneath that Knight of Swords coming through when you're approaching people. And it's not going to be this fighting energy, um, this this toxic cycle for completing um, situations and relationships and just kind of trying to hash things out. No, you're not going to be doing that anymore. You're going to be voicing and standing firm in who you are without having to be rude, without having to be combative. And you're going to be able to find people, three of cups, that really resonate with you, that want to celebrate you, that love you genuinely for who you are. And it's no longer going to have to be the struggle because we have that three of cups underneath that eight of swords, or excuse me, that eight of wands in reverse. 
And this is a whole new chapter for you. So like I said, we have two threes. We have the three of cups and we have the three of swords. So there's definitely with three being that maiden, mother crone energy or Holy Spirit, um, Father God. What am I missing? Father, Son, Holy Spirit energy. Thank you. Just something that's coming in in threes. We also have the triple goddess symbol on the Hecate card. So to me, this is something that's definitely being created in your life right now with this energy of the three, with this fire. This is some, some very expansive energy, some very potent energy here with the energy of three, with the 444, with the 1111. You're going to be bossing up in a way that is very, very expansively creative. Um, Three also represents the Empress as well in um, the Tarot. So something going on with your divine feminine energy that's just going to be leading you to completion, completion of phases, completion of opportunities, completion and clarity. Really, truly, I feel for you. Underneath this three of swords, we have the star card. So there's a huge rebirth happening here. And that's really what I'm talking about. It's almost like a big bang energy that I'm feeling for you guys in terms of how you're bossing up because that heartbreak really turned into something very beautiful for you. And isn't that amazing that you can turn something so negative into alchemy and turn it into creative passion, turn it into wisdom, turn it into drive. Underneath this ace of wands, we have the high priestess in reverse. To me, that really resonates with this star card, with the queen of swords, with the three of cups, with Hecate, reworking everything. Um, through your divine feminine wisdom and you know I feel like this is in reverse because you're not overtly in your head at this point in time pile number three with this ace of wands with this fire you're really in your body you're really fiery so there's a good balance between you know rebirth and starting and being tapped in into that crown chakra because the mudra we have is just straight up the crown chakra for you, pile number three. So really being in touch with your mind, that queen of swords energy, really knowing exactly what it is that you feel, using these swords to actually be very mentally clear, using this wisdom, using this creative fire and this passion to reignite your story, to reignite your life, to reignite who you are and your passion and your drive. This is something that's very powerful and very transcendent. Um, you have the crown being anointed too with the Believe in Your Own Magic deck and both of these beautiful ladies having crowns on their heads. So you are really tapped in to that crown energy with this mental awareness and this is how you are bossing up. You are changing your life, you are reworking things. We have another um, seven here, and this was actually seven of wands, not eight of wands. So we have two sevens. Seven has been a deep number today. I'm sorry that I said eight. So this to me still represents that you're leaving a cycle, even though it's not the eight of wands. I read that wrong. Excuse me for that. It is a seven. So that seven is wisdom and knowing better, knowing what to do, knowing what to do for yourself. Seven energy, the seven chakra. So this means infinite, the crown of the head, space, freedom, unity, lightness, joy, ultraviolet color, all chakras, pineal gland being activated. And you can really see that with Hecate. Okay, so this is really how you're going to be bossing up new creative opportunities, turning heartbreak into gold, turning heartbreak into creative expansion, new friends that love you for you, being able to passionately speak your truth without being too crass, too rude, changing the narrative and actually rising up from the ashes. So that is very beautiful. Um, I love your pile. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And this will conclude your reading. Please join me in the reverence mudra. I revere you. I honor you. Let's take a deep breath in. Out.
And with that, we say namaste. I love you until we meet again. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Again, I'm sorry if I seemed a little scattered, but I will get better as I start feeling better and we'll get back into our regular groove. Love you. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.